What I stated is basically the perception of the people. Recently, a schism took place in the Arab and Muslim world, especially in the Arab world, where the people are one thing and the leaders is another. My final sentence is that the people in the Arab world, because of the war two years ago in Lebanon, and the war, if not massacre, recently in Gaza, had all Arab and Muslim people on one side, and they felt their empowerment for Hezbollah, for Hamas, to withstand the arsenal of Israel, supported by the U.S. arsenal, MiGs, tanks, and the like. More than six days where the Arab regimes collectively, they could not stand in 1967 gave the people a new power, empowerment, that says we'll take care of you as leaders and we will take care of our central issue. Thank you very much. I take it very positive as a Shia Muslim that the United States did a great job in Iraq to free us. We were in slavery or bondage for almost 1,400 years. And now Shias have freedom, freedom of religion, freedom to pray, freedom to make their government. People have their rights. So for that, I'm thankful to the people of the United States and the government of the United States. More than 50 years ago, a congressman in Mississippi studying Bible was reading about how the slave should behave faithfully, work hard, be loyal to the master. And on the same form, a slave was reading Bible that a, he was reading about the Jews' freedom from Egypt or Pharaoh, and he was thinking about the, how he will get be freed from this congressman one day. So both were reading Bible, but they have a different perception. Same way, I West have a perception about East. We have a perception of coming from the uh, civilization, Roman civilization, where state and church were separate. And we think that is the best. And we think that's best for the West and should be best for the East. It could be, but it's just a perception. Islamic political thought has the main problem is with the Shias and Sunnis in the, in the ruling is due to the political thought. The difference in the political thought is that in the Middle East, the Sunni Muslims, caliphs rule for more than 1,000 years, two families, one ruled for about 250 years, and the other family ruled for more than 700 years. And the caliph, which means in English is vicegerent of God, he was spiritual or religious head and the ruler, a king and the pope, both. And that was more than 1,000 years. So they are used to that. 
and that's how they perceive the leaders and those leaders used to lead the prayers and appoint imams whereas in the west Obama just got selected he probably is going to hire uh, political appointments more than 2,000 people but maybe single one would not be priest but the Muslim rulers were appointing imams and priests and they themselves were leading the prayers and, and being the religious head. Now the Shia Islamic political thought is different than Sunnis and that's where we differ. The Shia political thought says that the scholar is spiritual and he's above the ruler so therefore, and a case in point is uh, our fourth Imam, uh, our, fourth, our first Imam, Ali, who was the fourth Caliph of Islam. He was advisor to the before, but then after that he just stayed in as a consultant until the people, the will of the people, came to him and said, you take over. So the Shia Muslims, uh, they have like, in modern day, if you see Iraq as a government, Sistani is just spiritual head, blessing, you know, jurisprudence. But the rulers are elected people. It's, it's again thanks to the United States that they did help to establish that system. But in Iran, people fed up with Shah of Iran, whatever reason was, and with the people's will, Khomeini came in. They gave him a great reception, we, we all saw on the TVs, and they respected him. After that, Khemenei is the leader. People have their wills, not in the case of Khemenei though, because if they, when they will decide that they don't want him, they will replace him. It's their job to keep him or replace him. We in the United States, right now, the, we have a book came out, the ruling, without governing. We want governments that listen to us and govern themselves over there, but we rule indirectly. The British used to send their governor and they used to govern also. But modern day uh, superpowers just rule and let the other people govern. So when the other people are not allowed to govern, I mean, not rule, then we get upset and we say, well, this is wrong. You, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. Coming to the democratic or revolution of Iran, I would say in the last 30 years, Iran has not invaded a single country. Iran has war prisoners and the immigrants that came from Afghanistan and Iraq. They treated them such a way that even the United States could use them when they needed them when they went to Afghanistan. So, and, and coming to the modern day, if we think about the United States, that what do we have right now, the problem? 